The way this auxiliary fence works is there's T-nuts embedded from behind the plate and then any auxiliary fence can be added with these quarter 20 screws. You need a sharp brad point drill to make clean holes and you'll need a Forstner bit to drill the counter bores on the other side of the plate to accommodate the T-nuts. Even though I used sharp drill bits there was still just a very slight catch on those holes so I ran 400 grit sandpaper along there and then uh, put a coat of wax on so that things move smoothly. Just want to make you aware of that. And there's other ways to attach an auxiliary fence. One is to build a structure on the back of the fence that comes down around here and then have toggle clamps that lock it in place. And another way is to cut dovetail slots in here and then get special clamps, um, micro jig makes them, to slide into those dovetail slots and clamp onto the other side of the fence. So I wanted to mention all that before you decide to butcher your fence, maybe you want to take one of the other routes. I've got a piece of aluminum, 1 8 inch thick, and I've cut it to the same length as the fence. Now I can mark the location of the blade so that I don't put any metal fasteners in that area. I've also marked the bottom and which side goes against the fence for future reference. Now I can remove the plate by going in with a 5 millimeter ball end hex wrench through the slot to access the bolt. Put them in a magnetic tray so I don't lose them. As it turns out there's keyhole slots here so I didn't have to actually remove the screws. I could have just loosened them and then slid the thing up. This fence was made in 2011 so it's about 10 years old so this glue is coming loose. So while I've got this off I'm going to scrape what's loose, uh, prime it and paint it just to make it look good and also seal the wood. This plate I'll try removing by just loosening the screws and that's the way to do it. These are 1 quarter 20 thread T-nuts and they're slightly less than 3 8 inches long which is suitable for the half inch thick plates on the fence. 3 quarter inch diameter to a depth of slightly less than 0.1 inches. I've located the holes to avoid interference with where the blade would go. I'll clamp this aluminum strip which is going to become a template onto the plate with the bottom down. Now I can drill through the plate and the aluminum with them clamped in position and that'll make a perfect template out of the aluminum. And next I drill 5 16 diameter through holes. I go a little bit from the underside so that I don't get tear out and then I drill the rest from the face side. So I'll drill a little bit from this side. And then we need a countersink to take care of that little radius in there. And I'll take off these sharp edges with a very slight countersink. Now I'm putting a little bit of epoxy on these before I press them in with the drill press. And I find the drill press much nicer than whacking it in with a hammer. There's all the T-nuts pressed in. That's what the other side looks like. So that's how it looks with the plate installed. The holes in the aluminum template were drilled with a 332nd drill bit, which fits this punch nicely. So I can mark these holes with pretty good precision. I'll be attaching the fence with these truss head screws. So I'm countersinking a 5 8 diameter hole. And then I'm drilling through with a 1 quarter inch drill bit. And finish off from the other side. I drilled these holes at one quarter inch and it's one quarter inch bolts which went in fine but the alignment of them all wasn't perfect so um, I enlarged them to 17 64ths with a twist drill. And there it is with an auxiliary fence installed. It's good and rigid. A handy jig I use on the high fence is this thing for cutting slots in 45 degree picture frames to make splines. This hooks onto the high fence. Like so. 
so it can't pull away and then it's pushed in by the fingerboard. And I wedge that in there tight. That cuts a predictable uniform width slot. I'll put a link below this video to another video on how I made this. Here's another style of auxiliary fence and I use that for trimming off the excess of a spline to get it close like that so that there is a minimum amount of wood left to be sanded or planed away. So that made quick work of trimming those splines. There's not many other ways you could do that, to do it that closely and cleanly and smoothly. Another useful auxiliary fence is when you want to have the blade set into the fence so that you just got a little bit of it protruding for certain kind of special cuts.